Right, I'm now going to introduce um, our friends from Kenya. So if Macheru and Purity could come join us from CNET, please. So this is bringing the digital, using the power of the internet uh, to help education so that people can eat. Because of course, if you have a full stomach, you feel a lot better to be able to study. Is that right? Over to you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Purity Gadoni. My co-presenter is Macheru Karuku. We are found as CNET International, Kenya. The title of our initiative is E-Gardens and Cottage Food Industries, Models for School Ecosystems. It comprises infrastructure and training as inputs, while water, food, and skills are outputs. Next. Next. The slides. Yep. Yeah, the problem we witnessed while working with the schools is systemic water and food insecurity and student apathy on a jobless and hopeless future. We therefore designed this initiative whose formula is infrastructure plus training gives water, food, and skills and we called it the e-gardens livelihood skills. Our implementation process was the prototype stage. We tested the e-garden components through online competitions, and we won $8,000, which we invested in the first water tank, and the second one, which was for women group where there was water resource conflicts. And the, the objective of the initiative was to catalyze the water and food security. Then we moved to the validation stage, where with our partners, Slovakid and One Dollar for Life, we invested 130,000 euros in 11 schools. We put up the infrastructure, which comprised the micro livestock. Next. We put up the gardens, and there was a lot of food in the gardens compared with how it was before. And there was also student skills. Next, please. And all this information was exchanged in the internet. That's why we call it the e-gardens uh, initiative. The students could exchange from one school to the other. And uh, it became very uh, popular with the students and teachers. And uh, in our next level, we also have student learning skills, like uh, preparing, uh, you can see the, they have some skills on food value addition, so that when they leave school, they have a bit of skills, survival skills. And uh, the, our achievement, you can say, was good because uh, we trained about 4,035 students, teachers and school workers, and by extension, 4,000 parents and 5,000 neighbors are benefiting from this initiative. We are now in our next stage. Next, please. In our next stage where we are now, we call it the controlled mass release stage, where we have superimposed the e-gardens on a, a park. We call it Savannah e-gardens park and campsite with a capacity of training about 100 students per week on the skills, and uh, we believe this will be very useful in sustainability and scalability because when they move from the campsite with the skills, they go and 
introduce that one in their schools, in their homes, in the neighborhood. So essentially, you have a lot of food for everybody. And uh, the challenges uh, have been the policy influencing on education policies on water and food, but we've been trying. There's also the finances. Uh, the camp is 30% complete, and we are very hopeful we are going to complete it and uh, achieve our objectives. In conclusion, we can say that the eGardens initiative is simple, and it is systemic. It is comprised of many systems. It is practical. It is sustainable at this. Thank you. Um, purity and maturity. Can you just tell us about yourselves? I and mean, it's very entrepreneurial, very business-minded. Um, how, how did you get involved in this? Uh, what, what were you doing, and how, how did you do this? We've, we've worked in schools with the students for the last 13 years. And while we were working in the schools, constructing classrooms and computer labs, we learned that they needed something much more than the classrooms. As you have seen, we are on the leeward side of Mount Kenya, which is often very dry, rain-fed agriculture. You harvest maybe once in three or four years. So we found there was need for uh, scaling up uh, food productivity. Excellent. I've actually been to Nanuki. Who else has been to Nanuki here? Please put your hands up. It's a beautiful part of the world with Mount Kenya right up there and Laikipia, wilderness all around, the beautiful animals. I mean, it really is extraordinary. I was there last year. Fantastic. Right. Who would like to go first? John? Well, congratulations. And uh, I, I hope I can come and film your work. And, and uh, thank you. Um, I uh, have seen something similar in Uganda the Green Schools program in Uganda. And what's ex interesting and exciting about this is that the students learn the techniques and then they teach their parents. And so it, it really transmits into to the entire villages. What I've seen and studied for about 20 years now is that this uh, hydro hydrological regulation, the water cycle in, in these areas, and it's not simply fragile areas, it's everywhere, if it's dependent on the organic material and the biomass. And if you, if you start with the children and they begin to understand this, and then they carry that through their entire lives, then it's possible to rehydrate dehydrated biomes. Mm. Now, uh, most people are, are completely unaware of this. It seems like they're they're just ruined landscapes, but in fact, they can be restored. The other thing that I would say is about the computers. Sometimes when we look at the school systems in, in many countries in Africa or South America or Asia, the, the, the difficulties seem huge because they have dirt floors and very few materials and so on. But actually, with computers, everyone in the world could have access to the sum of human knowledge if we do this correctly. So a lot of the, a lot of the unnecessary socialization that goes on in schools could change into real education. And uh, I think you'd be, uh, I've seen, for instance, the rapid rise of China from isolation and poverty, and it's possible to have transformational change on a planetary scale, and we really need it. So congratulations on your work. Thanks, Brian? You are so passionate. I'm, it is a fantastic project, and I really, it's, it, I'm touched, deeply touched. Uh, because I have been in Kenya for many times, and also in Uganda, see different type of school systems, or school feeding systems. And you have to recognize that school feeding programs have existed in Kenya for many, many years, I think in the, in the beginning of the 80s. 
And normally, the school feeding uh, programs are tagged as those role uh, children to play a very important role in achieving primary education. Education. But this project actually put school feeding programs into a quite new level. Mm. Yeah. Throughout Kenya, we have experienced that schools that enroll, in average, they enroll 28% higher uh, in schools that have feed programs than schools that have not. So this is very, really important. This particular project actually take feed programs to this new level where it not on only ensure that we have food and water access, but also that we actually are educated and secure the future food production system and, and introduce our small farmers actually to simple systems and cottage food industries. And this yeah. is so amazing. There is a huge potential for this project. Congratulations, and I think it's quite remarkable how you use technology and a new tool to actually bridge, build relationships between the younger generation and the older generation. You're not only empowering them again, but you're helping the younger, the youth, to heal the communities, bring them, bring them back together, and be, uh, play a positive role in building these communities, which very often the older generation tends to look down upon the youth and say they're the troublemakers or, or whatnot. So I really am very impressed of how you use this tool and not only make it available within the small community, but anyone else can access it and, and benefit from it. So it's quite remarkable, and I think we're going to try and do that in Jordan as well, so thank you. Um, and the other thing I would like to say is you've shown or demonstrated very clearly that the future and the past can be meshed into one. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So thank you again. Good luck. Um, first of all, congratulations. Um, uh, we like very trying a uh, very rethinking school. So uh, it's not just normal subjects, so if I like English, math, but actually teaching about like agriculture, war security, and also you don't just learn it, but you also like do it. It's a really important thing. And um, also I really like by using the power of the internet, because using the power of the internet you can communicate to others, teach others, and it's really important. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you both.